Welcome to our number two, the morning after live on Sports Grid and Sirius XM channel 159, the home for Sports Grid Radio on Sirius XM, all across the Spiz Grizz Network. That's Sports Grid. I am Ben Stevens, live from our New Jersey headquarters here at Bellworks. It's a football Friday to start off our number two. Now, I hope you have a great Friday. I hope you have a great weekend. Your weekend is not going to be nearly as good as Kirby Smart. I can guarantee you that because Kirby, the head coach of the reigning national champion, Georgia Bulldogs, got paid and paid in a big way yesterday, deserving of that national championship honor, a 10-year contract extension worth over $110 million to keep Kirby Smart, the head coach in Athens, Georgia, for a long, long time. A big payday for Kirby Smart as Georgia is about to begin their national title defense. SEC Media Day is more like Media Week in Atlanta, wrapping up yesterday. It was Monday through Thursday. ACC Media Days was Wednesday and Thursday in Charlotte, North Carolina. Talking season, for the time being, has come to a close, but Big Ten Media Days, Pac-12 Media Days on the horizon as well. And throughout his time at the podium on Wednesday afternoon in Atlanta, Kirby Smart spoke often about what Georgia will need to do to get back to that national championship game, to be at the pinnacle once again of college football. And you can see the dog's administration and how they feel about Kirby Smart, the job he has done for UGA, and how they continually want to reward him for that success. But he will need to maintain that success. And as the path sets up for Georgia on its national championship defense this year, it looks pretty good within the conference, certainly within the SEC East right now for the Georgia Bulldogs. Minus 550 is the number on the dogs to win the SEC East division on the FanDuel Sportsbook. The best odds of any team to win any division in the entire country of college football. They are minus 550 is Georgia in the SEC East. Even out West in the SEC West for Alabama, they're only minus 400. And every other price like Kentucky, Tennessee, Florida in quadruple digits. 12 to 1 is the next best number. That's on the Kentucky Wildcats. We have the Tennessee Volunteers at 14 to 1. And because we love the prop department here in our New Jersey headquarters, a Florida Gators helmet. Jack, put me back on screen. We got to show the Florida Gators helmet that we have. All of these mini helmets of so many college football programs across the country. We had the Baltimore Ravens when Melissa Kim was here. Now we're talking SEC East. So you get the Florida Gators helmet as Billy Napier is about to begin his debut year, his first season in the swamp in Gainesville. So again, it's those three teams, Kentucky, Tennessee, and Florida, expected, if any can, to rival Georgia at the top of the East Division in the Southeastern Conference. But can they knock off the dogs? Can they go get Georgia? Here's what they will need to do if they are even even able to accomplish or sniff the accomplishment of that feat of knocking off the top dogs, the win totals for Kentucky, Tennessee, and Florida entering 2022 are rather modest. Again, Kentucky has the second best odds in the SEC East, 12 to one behind Georgia's minus 550 price. But you'll see there, Tennessee actually has a slightly better win total, both teams at seven and a half for the number overall, but the over more heavily juiced for the Vols than it is for the Cats, both seven and a half, but over minus 170 for Tennessee. We'll dive into Florida here in just a moment. But first, we welcome in our Sports Grid Radio audience, the second hour of TMA, now a football Friday on Sports Grid. Sirius XM, Channel 159. That's the home of Sports Grid Radio on Sirius XM. And all of our terrestrial radio affiliates now in the mix as well. I am Ben Stevens. So Kirby Smart got paid in a big way yesterday. A 10-year, $112.5 million extension to remain the head coach in Athens, Georgia for a long time time coming and again Georgia the reigning national champions they won the national title last year for the first national championship victory for the Georgia Bulldogs in 41 years and they have the third best price to repeat as national title winners plus 350 from the overall standpoint in college football but the path lays out minus 550 in the SEC East the number on the Bulldogs to get back to an SEC championship game but who are the true challengers if any within that own division. We go back to the win totals. And let's focus on Florida for a minute here. Six and a half, the win total for the Gators entering 2022. The over heavily juiced at minus 170. It is the opening year for Billy Napier as the head coach 
in the swamp. He comes over from Louisiana, where he spent four years. In all four years, they went over six and a half in the regular season. They won double-digit games each of the last three years at Louisiana for the Raging Cajuns. And these quarterbacks for these teams are going to be a big reason why. If they can knock off the top dogs, look at Anthony Richardson, the dynamic playmaker for Florida and that offense. His odds to win the Heisman Trophy, 60-1. to one. The same number on Hendon Hooker for the Tennessee Volunteers, 60-1. to one. I think that price on Hendon Hooker is going to drop dramatically throughout the college football campaign. Why? Tennessee, under Josh Heupel, their offensive-minded head coach, ranked top 10 in both scoring and total offense a season ago. They put up 17 against Georgia in the regular season last year. It was the most points we saw from a team in the regular season against that vaunted UGA defense all year long. Will Levis, by the way, 100-1 to win the Heisman Trophy, puts mayonnaise in his coffee. That's disgusting. It's not even a funny gimmick, Will. Stop that stuff. Here's what we have the rest of the way here in hour number two on the morning after. UFC fight night. In London tomorrow, Patty the Batty in the octagon. And our Batty, Zach Parnes, joins the show up next. And then a full-blown preview for the Major League Baseball second half. That's coming your way on the morning after on Sports. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less. Aaron Rodgers and the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game practice. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider like the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In game live I all like access. Mandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game oh, live man. prime oh, yeah, time. Major, the PGA champion. In yes. game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. The early line. What do you think about Justin Verlander? Please do not tell me Verlander is plus is 250 eight? because everybody knows who he is. Do not do not tell me yes, that see? Verlander is That's plus 250 because he's been around for so long. He has been at maybe the best he's ever been in his career as he's approaching 40 right now. And also, do you get a bump here from the Astros who might chase down the New York Yankees? Only on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. I don't know where I'm at on DeAndre Hopkins. We only played in 10 games last season. He had a nagging injury that crushed his efficiency all year. I am the definition of out on DeAndre Hopkins. There's no way I'm dealing with this. When was the last time we've seen a player who's been suspended to come back and did some damage? All right? I mean, they always seem to get that soft tissue injury because they're not quite shaped. They've been out. The Sports Grid Network. Sports Fred's Rick Haro inside the $1.3 trillion business of sports with your daily numbers game. Well, I'm here in northern Scotland ready for the British Senior Open, but it can't top the regular Open and it can't top a 20 under par Cam Smith, Cam Young 19, Murray McElroy 18, the whole country in a tizzy, and the bottom line is the economic impact off the charts. There are some controversies, though. Martin Slumbers, the head of the RNA, calls the LIV defectors kind of greedy they say they made their bed and they can't lie in it and the bottom line is there are a lot of golfers like Rory McIlroy who talk about hypocrisy and you need to tone the rhetoric down but yet 150 million dollars in signing bonus for some of the players and a guaranteed purse it takes away some of the competition quite clearly the majors continue to be the keys to all of this can't wait for next year the majors are over.
Back right here live on the morning after on Sports Grid on this Friday. No props for our next guest that is about to join the show here on TMA. Maybe we just put the hands up because we're talking UFC fight night in London tomorrow with one of the bright stars in the game in the octagon tomorrow night. One of the bright stars in all of sports media joins us here now on the morning after. The man I coined our baddie it is Zach Parnes throwing some pretty weak punches if I do say so myself. Are those hands even regulation size? Zach Parnes, thank you for joining us here on the morning after. The disrespect, Ben, you're going to find out what these hands will do. You keep talking like that. Oh, whoa. Hey, oh, maybe we got to get in the octagon pretty soon and go a couple around. Zach Parnes has been all across sports grid. He is very, very knowledgeable when it comes to the UFC. And tomorrow night, Zach, like I mentioned, actually tomorrow afternoon for us here in the States because of the time difference over across the pond, one of the bright young stars in UFC, Patty the Batty, Patty Pimblett, in the octagon in a heavy, heavy favorite right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook. Nearly $3 at minus 290 for an outright victory. Parnes, he is a bright star, a media personality, incredibly fun to follow on social media. But as a fighter, is he deserving of a minus 290 favorite price? Whew. That's the billion dollar question, is it not, Benjamin? But let's be real here. I mean, the kid from Liverpool has a lot of swagger. I, I think that people have been electrified by his quick stoppages, his, you know, uber vibrant personality that you were talking about. They love the accent, etc. cetera. Uh, the, to be honest, though, I think he is worthy of that simply because this is a striking mismatch like we've ever seen it. Probably the equivalent of throwing Canelo Alvarez in against your kindergarten teacher to an extent. I won't degrade Jordan Levitt that much, but what, what I will say is that Patty the Batty throwing six and a half significant strikes a minute in the sport compared to Levitt's two and a half. And Patty's mm. got tremendous takedown defense, which Levitt usually uses to his advantage to be able to get people to the canvas and to his area where he can play things a bit safer. Uh, but but Patty, I mean, he, he electrified fans earlier this week by saying that not only was he going to dance after beating Jordan Levitt as he does after all of his opponents, but that he was actually going to teabag Jordan Levitt a la Whoa. Halo 3, uh, Modern Warfare 2, as he liked to say it there on the microphone. So, I mean, Pat, Patty's got Reaction. the character. The question is, does he get another significant win in the UFC? His last opponent, uh, Luigi Vandramini, was not exactly a, a good matchup for him the sport and Dana White kind of took an acknowledgement of that and now they've given him a bit of a more severe task in Levitt who's 10 and 1 but I still like Patty to to finish this one inside the distance for those who don't know what that means at home it means that uh Patty finishes the fight early it does not go to decision so he wins by yeah. TKO or he wins by submission and that right now at minus 120 on the FanDuel Sportsbook uh looks pretty promising I also like the notion of the under in this fight card uh which I believe you guys have it at minus 196 or so right now yeah. uh there's a finish coming in this one we've seen patty's ability to finish fights i hope we see it again in london yeah zach as you said right there when you see a minus 290 outright price it's not the most enticing bet that you can make but there are options like the over under for the total rounds of this fight between Patty the Batty and Jordan Levitt. And the indication as the juice would stack up there to the under of two and a half rounds at minus 196 is that this is going to be a quick bout. Why is that in the matchup that we expect it to be a quick fight tomorrow night for Patty the Batty? I think that both of these guys have a reputation for finishing, and, and that's really the the caveat in making all of this happen. I mean, there's things in this that, that prop-wise could seem juicy to some people. Levitt's as high as like plus 600 on some places for TKO, but if you like Patty's big hands to be able to get the job done, I'm like, my hands over here uh you, you maybe take a look at him uh tko ko dq uh, at plus 240 right now you're going to see that range mm. across a variety of sports books but i know that's a uh, the fan duel rate as as we uh as we have it but for me the baddies his biggest thing in this fight is whether or not he's going to be able to show significant striking prowess in the first round. And that's why the under is as heavy as it is, is because Patty knows that he has to come out and make another statement win. He knows that people are dismissing that W that he has against Luigi simply because 
Vandermini did not do a very good job in his last couple appearances in major promotions. Um, and now Patty Pimblett, who's been this electrifying figure, a la Conor McGregor, sort of with his mm. UK kind of esque roots, you know, not to insult Ireland. I know it is not a part of the United Kingdom, but. <laughs> We got the baddie who is bringing a similar sort of demeanor and also that kind of vibrant exuberance. I mean, today he mooned yeah. the crowd for the weigh-ins. I'm not even kidding. Like, he actually did that and said, thanks for fat shaming me and proceeded to show his uh, Liverpool behind. What's what's a good, I don't know. We're, we're missing some joke there, Ben, but that, that's how it goes. I don't know. I, I can't say I know enough about Liverpool, but I do know Ireland is not part of of the United Kingdom. So let's not ruffle any more no. feathers here. Zach Parnes on the morning after. Again, Patty the Batty, a minus 290 favorite. Heavy, heavy, substantial odds on favorite in that bout against Jordan Levitt. But the rest of the main card, Zach, features bouts we can expect to be a little bit more competitive as the odds would stack up. Yesterday, between Chris Curtis and Jack Hermanson, the number was minus 113 on both sides. Now a little bit more skewed to Chris Curtis on the updated odds on the FanDuel Sportsbook. But even Tom Aspinall against Curtis Blades, that's minus 146. So a little bit closer here in terms of the distinction. What's your approach when you have fights that are relatively short numbers compared with one fighter to the other? Oh, it's hard. I mean, this is a fight, Ben. Like at the end of the day, like there's things that happen that that people just don't see coming. Uh, and, and it's difficult to 100% be like, this is why the margin is this narrow versus this wide. When you talk about that Chris Curtis, Jack Hermanson fight, though, the Joker is interesting enough simply because you watch the way that the line has moved. It's kind of a gift right now at that minus 113, minus 110 range because uh, he opened at minus 160 against Curtis. I mean, that's a 15.3% line increase if my math yeah. is correct right there. Uh, for me, that fight in particular is kind of the classic you know, the, the sport and the promotion itself has been hyping Chris Curtis to no end. Uh, he had a very strong performance on Dana White's Contender Series. He throws heavy hands. Don't get me wrong. But Hermanson has fought some of the best strikers in that division. And even though he does strike at a less rate, Jack knows that he needs to win this fight. It, it means more for him. He's 2-2 two and two in his last four performances. Curtis has not taken a loss uh, in recent times. So I, I'm I'm leaning Hermanson in that one. And then we talk about the, the mm. blade. Blades Aspinall fight. Uh, Blades right now getting that short dog kind of look, I think, simply because he has strung together some good TKO performances. But the thing is with Curtis Blades right now is that he's a wrestler. He doesn't really electrify people. He's a Juco uh, champion and, and also just a guy that we've seen who's exhibited takedown after takedown fight after fight. I mean, he took down Alexander Volkov 14 times. Now, granted, Aspinall, a, Bra a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt, uh, is going to have a bit of a easier time deflecting those takedowns, but people will see with some of my picks. I mean, I'm taking Blades by decision, which is at plus 440 right now, simply because I think his wrestling is going to allow him to, to be able to ride this fight out. But a lot of people are high mm -hmm. on Aspinall, who's one of the quickest to five wins in the UFC ever. So uh, a good heavyweight duel in the main event. I'm sure it's going to get the fans of London electrified. So this is what we have on UFC Fight Night tomorrow. Only a minute left here, Parnes, but next week, UFC 277, the rematch between Juliana Pena and Amanda Nunez, two of the best fighters in the sport on the women's side. What can we expect? Um, I wonder if we can expect an upset again. Uh, Juliana Pena told everybody afterwards in vulgar fashion that she was not surprised. Then something else that I won't say here. Uh, but I will say that Amanda Nunes uh, for a long time was considered the probably the greatest female fighter ever. So the question is, do we see her continue to, to you know, string her career together and be able to get back on the, the horse, so to speak, against Pena, who totally upset her? I mean, remember that fight last? time I and mean, noon's opening at minus 5900 on some books thought it'd be interesting to see what the odds are this time zach parnes have a great weekend my friend more the morning after up next If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. 
Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. The morning after. The ACC, Josh, has not been one of those conferences to expand. That has been the Big Ten and the SEC. Where do you see the future for the ACC going? It's weird hearing him say that. That's like bragging about being one of the best restaurants, but not making the most money. So you're just taking a shot at the way you run your business and the way you're able to put together TV deals and all these sorts of things. So not really a great thing. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. The one that stands out to me that I think would be the most intriguing, believe it or not, is Seattle. I think that if that guy ended up playing with Rodriguez and going out there with what he's able to do with a bat, if they had and tied France on top of it and the pitching that they have now with Robbie Ray, if they got their hands on Juan Soto, they would be a serious problem. The Sports Grid Network. Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. They play last game. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less. Aaron Rodgers and the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell, coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley comes over there. Give me the game practice. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider like the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In game live all like access. Mandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game oh, live win. prime oh, yeah, time. Major, the PGA champion. In yes. game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. The early line. Yes, no on will Judge hit 50 home runs. Over under is 49 and a half. He is at 33. So certainly when you see Aaron Judge, who is the leader in the clubhouse right now, 33 home runs, guy in second place there we'll talk about shortly, is Kyle Schwarber with 29. But it seems like the expectation here is if the Yankees want to do something special, Aaron Judge is certainly going to be along for the ride and be one of those catalysts. Only on Sports Grid. The second half of the Major League Baseball season started yesterday, but it was only eight teams in action, and it was only six games, and two of those six were in a doubleheader fashion. Today is really the start of the second half of the MLB campaign. Action all across the league on this Friday slate, but we're well past the halfway point of the Major League Baseball regular season from games played on the diamond. Most teams around 90, 91, 92, 93 games even played so well past the halfway point which would be 81 of the daily grind of the 162 in just a few minutes we hope the host of diamond bets joe pisapia will join us here on the morning after to set the stage for what we can expect the rest of the way in mlb but we'll start to do that here in the bigs we talked about the american league east early on in the show in that opening hour how many teams out of the AL East if you include the Yankees from the five in the division will make the postseason right now three are certainly on track with both the Boston Red Sox and the Orioles within three and a half games of that last and final AL wildcard spot so the entire division all five teams as it stands right now actually have postseason hopes but let's look across the American League and where the wild card race sets up Right now, divisional front runners in the New York Yankees, a 12 game lead over the Tampa Bay Rays in the American League East. The Houston Astros, a 10 game lead over the Seattle Mariners in the AL West. We have to figure out what's going to happen in the American League Central, and we do that 
with some of these make playoff odds here correlated to their odds to win the American League pennant. There's a clear distinction right now between the Yankees and the Astros at the top of this board. Plus 140, the favorite price for New York, plus 200 for Houston. We showed you the Toronto Blue Jays there at plus 950, the third best odds to win the AL pennant right now. And Toronto is minus 500 to reach the American League playoffs. Helping us make sense of it all. Looking at the playoff picture even here as we just are about to begin the full second half start of the Major League Baseball campaign. The host of Diamond Bets each and every weekend live here on Sports Grid. Joe P. Sapia joins us now on this Friday on the morning after. Joe P., it is a pleasure to have you on the show once again. Yes, it's a pleasure to be here as always. Talking a little baseball with you. This is the stretch run now. We're already past the halfway. The All-Star break is over. That's all done Now it's about the trade deadline, who's in, who's not, and what those last 70 games or so are going to be like for the teams that are contenders. And now with the expanded playoffs, I think a little bit more of an interesting trade deadline potentially ahead of us. Certainly so. Six teams now in each league reach the postseason in Major League Baseball. The three divisional winners and now three wildcard spots in both the American League and the National League. The AL wildcard race, Joe, is going to be fascinating. And we just flashed this graphic moments ago with the teams that are in contention for those three wildcard spots. And not only they make playoff odds at the break, but where they stack up in the American League pennant odds. Toronto is plus 950, the third best odds right now, and minus 500 to reach the postseason. They lead the way here, although they are the sixth spot in the American League playoff picture at the moment. As you peruse... Those five teams right there. Who do you feel most confident about making the American League postseason? Well, I think the Blue Jays are at the top of that for a reason. I think we all look at the Blue Jays as a team that really haven't played their best baseball. They have a ton of talent. They do have some top-end pitching with Manoa and Gossman. Barrios has been better of late and a little bit more consistent. So that's a team I think you can easily make a case for, and that's why you get the best odds on them. Uh, the rest of this, it's it's a little tricky, right? I mean, you look at the Minnesota Twins, and it's funny because they're a team at the top of their division right now, but in terms of making the playoffs or making a wild card, you know, Vegas isn't yep. very enthusiastic. They're at plus 2,000. I think that's kind of tells you all you need to know about maybe the Twins being a bit of a paper tiger in that division. Um, the Rays kind of in a tough spot right now because without Wander Franco for these next few weeks still, that's a huge bat. I know they got Brandon Lau back. That's a, a big addition to the offense, but – They really need Wander Franco in the worst way. And I don't know if they're going to go out and make the kind of trade that they might have to for that offense. I also have concerns about Shane McClanahan the second half, too, as the innings continue to mount upon him. I think it's going to be really tough for him to have the second part of the season or the latter part of the season look exactly like the first part did. That's asking a lot of a young pitcher. Uh, And then, look, the rest of these teams here, Seattle, I think, has played inspired. Uh, They are a team that I think if they were out acquiring another starting pitcher, which I think that's the key for them, really, they desperately need that, maybe one more bat as well. That's a team I feel pretty confident in because they are getting Mitch Hanniger Mm. back too, which is a player a lot of us forget, but this is a dude who hit 40 home runs last year. Mitch Hanniger is a big piece in this offense. So Hanniger's addition to Julio Rodriguez already in that order. Winker and Suarez have overall been pretty good contributors. There was a smart trade that they made in the offseason. So for me, it's the Blue Jays, the Mariners, and White Sox. And yeah, those are the three favorites. Those are the three teams I think have the best opportunity here. And the White Sox, once again, a team that we, I feel like we come here and talk about the White Sox, I don't know, every single week. And we're all waiting for them to turn it on because the talent is there. So this is it. This is the fork in the road. This is the make or break moment for the Chicago White Sox. But if you had to ask me to pick one, it would be the Blue Jays. Two, it would be the Mariners. And the third one, it it would still be the White Sox because the talent there and just waiting for that talent to win out because typically in baseball it does. Well, indulge me here then, Joe P. Let's continue (laughs) the White Sox conversation because they are now three games back of Minnesota Mm -hmm. for the top spot in the American League Central, but still in third place in that division as of right now. The Cleveland Guardians, only two games back of the Twins. They own the second spot, and that's how Chicago and Cleveland will open up the second half of the Major League Baseball season in a divisional duel today on the south side of Chicago with the White Sox booked as a home favorite at minus 154, live right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook. You summed it up beautifully there. A fork in the road for the White Sox right now. But if you are optimistic on Chicago, is this the time to buy in? It is, but it's ironic because if you look at to win that division, they're somewhere around like plus 125. And then you're looking around and you see 
the Guardians are sitting at five to one still. So the Guardians are the far more exciting, sexy wager in this division. And that's a team that doesn't quit. This is a very important series. And I will tell you this, if the Guardians should sweep this series, right? If they look really good and they stick it to the White Sox, this might be stick a fork in them, not the fork in the road. This might be stick the fork mm-hmm. in the White Sox. I'm telling you. And I don't want to be hyperbolic coming out of the break and say, oh, this, se- this series means everything. But I think it does in a lot of ways. I think the White Sox kind of need to make a statement here in this series this weekend. And look, they've got Giolito on the mound today. That's the guy you want out there. He has pitched much better of late, starting to look more like the Giolito of old that we saw last season, who was absolutely dominant. If him and Cease can continue to be at the top of their rotation and Lance Lynn starts to figure things out, maybe that little break for him mentally, physically is a good thing. We shall see. But this is really important because you're not getting a great number on the White Sox anyway. So for me, if you don't like Minnesota, the interesting pick is going on the Cleveland side because the Cleveland Guardians play good baseball. They have pitching. They have Jose Ramirez, who's an MVP candidate this year, even though he's not going to win. He has played fantastic baseball all year. So you just can't make a lot of money on the White Sox right now. <laughs> like you almost you almost wish it was three or even four to one right now, and then you yeah. could jump in there. But the plus 125 is just not super exciting to win this division. It's a better bet for them to just go ahead and make the playoffs. That is a more intriguing wager, especially now that the Red Sox have lost Chris Sale again. You know, that Chris Sale addition was huge for the Red Sox in that rotation. Taking him out of that equation for the next few weeks. To me, that was almost the death knell of the Red Sox. And now there's rumors that they might be sellers, which is almost unthinkable after the last year and a half of how good they've played and nobody thought they would be there. And now here we are at the deadline thinking about them as sellers is kind of crazy. Boston minus 134 now to miss the postseason with those updated odds at the Mm -hmm. All-Star break. The White Sox plus 125, the second best odds in the American League Central right now. Minnesota, the slight favorites by a whopping five cents. At plus 120. (laughs) Chicago entered the All-Star break with tons of optimism, taking three of four in that final weekend series against Minnesota in the end of the opening half of this Major League Baseball season. So the hottest team in baseball right now, Joe P., after the All-Star break, the Seattle Mariners. A 14-game win streak now begins the second half of the Major League Baseball season. Another divisional duel against the top team in that division, the Houston Astros booked as a slight favorite are the Strohs on the road today. But Joe P, can the streak live on today in Seattle? Uh, it can. Uh, you got your Quidi on the mound against Marco Gonzalez. And Marco Gonzalez gives up a lot of fly balls. And that's a dangerous thing to this lineup with Houston. Uh, that's not something you want to do. Most of those fly balls tend to find the seats. So I would be looking at some home run props and some total bases on guys like Bregman, guys like Altuve and Alvarez, of course, as well. Uh, but this is an important game here. You know, the, the Mariners win streak has been a great story, but when you're beating up on teams like Texas, it's a little different than when you have to play teams like the Houston Astros. And the Astros, I think, are poised to be the team from the American League. At some point, I think even yesterday you saw it again, Christian Javier, I think, is running out of gas a little bit. I think he's going to end up in the bullpen. I think Lance McCullers, when he comes back, might end up in the bullpen as well. And if that's mm. the case, you've got a really deep rotation, guys who can come back into the rotation if you, God forbid, have an injury. But think about, you know, you have Framber Valdez, you have Justin Verlander, obviously, at the top. You have Garcia, you have your Quidi, you have all these guys who have pitched very well. Odorizzi back in the rotation, too. And all of a sudden, McCullers, Javier in the bullpen before you get to Presley. Man, that sounds tough in a short series to me. And now all the public money is going on the Yankees. But to me, it's the, it's the Astros that I think are the team to beat in the American League right now. Houston sweeping the doubleheader in Houston yesterday against the Yankees to open up the second half. The Strohs win five of seven in the season series against the pinstripes. Joe, we're trying to figure out what's happening in the American League Central. We can do the same (laughs) in the NL Central. Only a couple of seconds left here, really, in this break, but Joe P will be back for a second straight segment. It's the tightest division in all of MLB right now. Only a half-game lead for Milwaukee over St. Louis, yet the Brewers are booked as a minus-160 favorite. 30 seconds left before we hit the break, Joe P, and plenty more discussion to come on the other side. Is there value on the Redbirds? I don't think there is anymore. Uh, and, and it's unfortunate because I think Vegas is telling you that that pitching staff with Woodruff and Burns and getting Freddie Peralta back in the few weeks ahead, that's going to be the difference maker. No matter how much we don't like the Milwaukee Brewers offense, and I don't, that pitching is going to be too tough. Only a half game lead, but follow the odds. Milwaukee, a minus 160 favorite in the division. More TMA next. (laughs) 
If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or TuneIn, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. The morning after. The ACC, Josh, has not been one of those conferences to expand. That has been the Big Ten and the SEC. Where do you see the future for the ACC going? It's weird hearing him say that. That's like bragging about being one of the best restaurants, but not making the most money. So you're just taking a shot at the way you run your business and the way you're able to put together TV deals and all these sorts of things. So not really a great thing. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. The one that stands out to me that I think would be the most intriguing, believe it or not, is Seattle. I think that if that guy ended up playing with Rodriguez and going out there with what he's able to do with a bat, if they had and tied France on top of it and the pitching that they have now with Robbie Ray, if they got their hands on Juan Soto, they would be a serious problem. The Sports Grid Network. Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers games. And the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell, and coast to ABG, coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game penguins. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider it. Like so everybody is out for the Warriors. In game live all like access. Mandy. I like Mandy against Bam. I think Mandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game oh, live man. prime oh, time. In game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. The early line. Yes, no on will judge hit 50 home runs over under is 49 and a half. He is at 33. So certainly when you see Aaron Judge, who is the leader in the clubhouse right now, 33 home runs guy in second place there. We'll talk about shortly is Kyle Schwarber with 29. But it seems like the expectation here is if the Yankees want to do something special, Aaron Judge is certainly going to be along for the ride and be one of those catalysts only on Sports Grid. Back right here on the morning after a second straight segment with our guy, Joe Pisapia, the host of Diamond Bets, where we are setting the stage now for the second half of the Major League Baseball season. Yes, sure, we had games yesterday, but the entire league is back in action in MLB today. And Joe, as we rounded out that last segment, the final couple of seconds, we were discussing the National League Central. Right now, Milwaukee, a half game lead over St. Louis in the division and a minus 160 favorite. But The cards, still pretty good odds to make the postseason with those updated numbers at the All-Star break. Minus 152, tied for the sixth and final NL spot in the postseason with, right now, the Philadelphia Phillies as well. And the Phils, minus 120. So as you evaluate the National League wildcard race, Joe P., it seems like Atlanta or whoever doesn't win the National League East will be a lot in front of everybody else. The Padres will get to in just a moment. But who gets Mm -hmm. that last spot as we get ready for the second half, the sixth and final spot in the National League postseason? Well, the Harper health is the hang-up with the Phillies right now. Um, And I think of all these teams, the one team that's probably going to be aggressive at the deadline is going to be the Cardinals. I think they're going to add something. Now, what that is, it's still going to take a little while to figure out. I think they need a starting pitcher. Uh, I think that's really where they'd like to go. Maybe some bullpen help as well. That would probably be a wise decision for the Cardinals. Um, and, and look, Aaron Nola's pitched great. Wheeler's very good. Cassianos has given them nothing so far. Uh, I expect Cassianos to have a better second half. He's just a far better player than what you've seen out of him this year. I think it's that 
you know, first year of a big contract in a new city kind of thing that we've seen many, many times before. I mean, we saw it with his teammate Bryce Harper a few years ago. So I think it's just something that he'll shake off in the second half. And I'd be looking at him a lot in in the prop market individually. He's going to get hot at some point in time. So I would keep an eye on for that. But it, it feels like the Cardinals. I mean, the Cardinals are an organization that, you know, knows how to win, knows how to put things together. Um, I think for them, they just really, they had an opportunity there when Woodruff was out and Peralta was out to like the Braves yeah. in the East kind of close the gap. And they, and they didn't quite do it. I think enough, just like the Braves, I don't think did it enough. Like you should have overtaken them when you don't have Scherzer or DeGrom and the same thing. Like when you're missing big pieces, you have to kind of make your run and overtake. And now that Woodruff is back healthy and looking like Woodruff and Peralta's maybe what, two weeks away, potentially we think, that's a tough out, right? Because you, I mean, you only need to score two or three runs a game to win for those two guys. And Williams has been outstanding too in that bullpen for Milwaukee. So, um, to me, it, it's the Cardinals here to lose that last spot. But you know, I do think they need an addition. That's for sure. And it's unfortunate. You know, I thought the Cardinals really had a run in them that they could have overtaken Milwaukee because yeah. Milwaukee's offense has just been dreadful all year. I mean, really tough. I mean, all or nothing at moments. They don't really create runs very well. Uh, they've had bad seasons from Yelich. Hunter Renfro has been hurt quite a bit. So I don't know if at this point, I feel like it's the Cardinals really to lose. And I think the Cardinals being the organization, they are always find a way to win. Minus 152, that price on St. Louis to make the postseason plus 125, the second best odds in the national league central and to echo Joe's point here. You might be saying they're only a half game back of Milwaukee entering the second half of the Major League Baseball season. But there was a two-week stretch there as we got ready for the All-Star break where it seemed like nobody, neither the Brew Crew or the Redbirds, wanted to take control of the National League Central, and the door seemed open for St. Louis to do that. But now the second-best price, a half game behind Milwaukee, and as the odds would indicate, certainly favors the Brewers in this division at minus 160. A great pitching matchup today in City Field between Max Scherzer for the New York Mets and Yu Darvish of the San Diego Padres. The Mets, Joe, booked as a pretty heavy favorite at minus 180. What's your breakdown for this matchup today? Uh, well, look, I'm on the Scherzer side, especially at home. He's pitched outstanding uh, since he's come back from that injury. Uh, you Darvish always going to be very tough. Uh, that Padres lineup, though, has some holes in it, has some strikeouts. Right now, I want to say that K prop on Scherzer is is pretty doable as well. I want to double check that number before I give it to you. Seven and a half over on FanDuel. I think you can absolutely go over that number against the Padres without a doubt. Um, and... You know, the Mets, I think, have a little bit of momentum, believe it or not, coming into this break. You know, they, they played pretty well uh, into the break here. I think a little bit of a respite is good for guys like Marte, who had been banged up a little bit. He's a very important piece in that lineup. And I do think all this Juan Soto buzz is is mm. <laughs> is worth it. I, I think they're going to be the favorites to land him, and I do think he is going to get dealt. And People say, well, they shouldn't trade him in the division and all that stuff like that. that. That stuff is dead now. Now that you have expanded playoffs, to me, the division means far less or in-division stuff is far less of a taboo than it was in the past. Because as you look right now, the American League East, I mean, it looks like almost everybody from the American League East at one point was looking like they were going to make the playoffs, right? So yeah. I think we kind of push that aside. It's all about getting the best deal. I think the momentum right now favors the Mets getting to Grom back. I think mentally is a huge boost for this team. Alonzo is a great team leader. The doors had a very good season. So the Mets right now are in a good position. They held off the Braves in the time where it was most difficult to do so. And I feel like now it's a little bit of sigh of relief. And you got Scherzer, you got DeGrom. Once again, you know, just like the Astros before, like you tell me how you go through a short series with that pitching. Uh, that is tough because those guys would take the ball probably five times in a short series. Yeah. That's really difficult for any opposing. I don't care if it's the Dodgers. I don't care if it's the Braves. I don't care who it is. Those two guys are two of the best pitchers in baseball, and that's asking a lot of a team to win four games in a seven-game series when those guys start five. A two-and-a-half game lead for New York in the National League East over Atlanta as the second half begins. The Padres trail the Dodgers by ten-and-a-half games now in the National League West, but despite that within the division, still, as you can see there, minus 340 to make the postseason. Joe, how do you evaluate San Diego entering the second half of this year? Well, look, I mean, we spoke all the way back in March about my love for the Padres, and then they acquired Sean Manaya before the season started. And I said, look, this rotation, this team is built for the regular season and the postseason. And I think that's something you can't really, you know, discredit or discount right now. I think they could use another bat. I've been saying this for months now. 
I think they were waiting for Fernando Tatis Jr. to come back. And the longer that wait happens, I think they're just a little bit more pressure. I think they need to do something. Uh, Hosmer started off like a house on fire and he has done nothing. Cronenworth showed signs of life lately. But I, I still look at this offense and think they need a little bit more of a boost. They need some more protection mm. in here. Luke Voigt's not enough in this lineup uh, around Manny Machado. So the Padres pitch well. Uh, the Padres certainly have uh, a good defensive team as well, which I think helps quite a bit. And that's something we don't talk enough about. We all talk about the pitching. We'll talk about the bullpens. We don't talk about defense enough. And the Padres are a good defensive team. They know how to catch the ball, they throw the ball. This is a team that's very sound and it helps the pitching staff as well. It helps them extend innings as well, uh, where, you know, the pitchers, instead of going six innings, they're more efficient. Maybe they can go to seven because they can turn those double plays. They can get to balls that are hits in other defenses. And I think that's a huge mm -hmm. thing when you have these guys who are such good defensive defensive players. So for me, the Padres are a playoff team. I feel better about them than the Phillies. And I feel better about them than the Cardinals, even though they're behind them right now. So to me, I think uh, you're looking at the Padres, a team that's going to be in the playoffs and is going to be a tough out, especially if Tatis does eventually come back and look like Tatis. But that's a big question. Who is Tatis Jr. when he comes back with that wrist? How healthy is he? Where's the timing at? You know, it's it's a tough sell. He's a young player, yeah. but a, with a ton of talent. But at the same time, it's not like Victor Martinez, you know, was that guy you could say, well, it doesn't matter. You could wake up Victor Martinez in six months. He's been sleeping and he can come in and go three for four. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we could say that about Tatis. I don't know what his timing situation is like. So at this point, I think this is another team that has to make a move at the deadline, has to bring another bat. San Diego owns that second wild card spot in the National League right now, but interesting odds movement against the Padres. They're 17-1 to 1 to win the NL pennant, tied for the fifth best odds alongside Philadelphia and St. Louis at the moment on the FanDuel Sportsbook. Individually, Joe P., Sandy Alcantara did not get the start in the All-Star game in Los Angeles. That was Clayton Kershaw, ceremonious in front of the home crowd at Dodger Stadium. On the mound today, though, is the reigning NL Cy Young Award winner in Corbin Burns. And his Milwaukee Brewers are a minus 295 favorite at home against the Colorado Rockies. Now, Sandy is the odds-on favorite to win the National League Cy Young. Can Corbin Burns, though, Joe P., make a run here in the second half to shorten that gap at the very least? He can. Uh, I would also say uh, Corbin Burns should absolutely be a huge favorite tonight on the mound. The over on the K props, the over on, on everything you can get for Corbin Burns being awesome tonight, uh, except for the earned runs. I would be under against the Colorado Rockies. But I think in a lot yeah. of ways, Alcantara's snub as the all-star game starter has really worked in his favor for the Cy Young. Because I think mm. a lot of people saw that and, you know, went, well, that guy's really deserving. And I think that's a narrative that can sustain over these next two months. Again, it's a it's a media award at the end of the day. So that mm. media attention that Alcantara is getting on social media, where every time he makes a start, we all look back and look, look what he's done over his last five starts, over his last eight starts, over his last 12. It just keeps mounting and mounting. And then even though he should have started the All-Star game, I think that snub in a lot of ways kind of works in his favor. Now, the ship has kind of sailed here. Corbin Burns is 7-1 to one right now. I mean, it's a beautiful number. He's pitched well enough. Yep. The problem is, is there a narrative for him? And that's kind of where I struggle. I mean, the Marlins are not a good baseball team, and this guy's been such a good pitcher, and I don't see him slowing down anytime soon. And, and the fact that he's not, you know, he's so efficient, and he's going seven innings, eight innings in some of these starts here uh, for a team that, just went, what, 34 scoreless innings for the Marlins in these last few weeks? I mean, it's kind of crazy to think about what they haven't done offensively. And Alcantara's still out there pitching great. I got him locked in, I think it's 6-1 to one, uh, for my personal odds. I had him in Musgrove, and then I was able to cash out of Musgrove and put the rest of it into Alcantara again at 3-1 to one as it was dropping because it just seemed like that's where the market was going. And that's the nice thing about certain sites like Vandal where you can play it like the stock market. You know, you can make some money on something and then – cash out of it and reinvest it somewhere else. The same thing I did with Otani and Judge for MVP because there was a certain time where you had to have some Judge exposure and you knew the yeah. Otani number was going to grow during the Judge juggernaut moments. But at the end of the day, it would have to come back to Otani because Otani is special and does something no one else does. So the market almost, you have to look at it like a stock market and those sites that allow you to play it as such, those are the ones I think you should be investing in futures because it allows you to always come out positive in a lot of ways but also continuously invest, reinvest, take money out when things aren't going the right direction. Great advice right there from Joe P because the market has moved in the American League mm -hmm. individual award races. Shohei Otani is the even money favorite to win the AL MVP 
at plus 100. Aaron Judge, plus 125. Shohei Otani on the mound today in Atlanta. And he has the third best odds still to win the American League Cy Young at plus 850. But to start the second half of the season today, Joe, what can we expect out of Otani on the mound where he has been so brilliant in the first half of the year? Uh, well, look, uh, Otani right now, if you look, he's eight to one uh, for the Cy Young in most books, somewhere around there. And I think that's going to shrink uh, as well. Uh, this run he's been on has been absolutely spectacular. It's been fun. I'm still on Verlander for the Cy Young. I was on Verlander before the season started. I'm on Verlander now. I have invested, reinvested several times. I know McClanahan's still the favorite, too, when you flash those odds for the Cy Young before. Uh, I love Otani tonight for the Bra against the Braves. I think Otani's in a great situation here uh, for tonight's game. I think Otani is going to make this a closer race, but I have distinct concerns about McClanahan being able to survive the innings total. And as great as he is, Justin Verlander is a much more public face for the general mm -hmm. voting public who hasn't pitched in over a year, who is pitching for a team that has dominated wire to wire. There's a good chance he's going to get 20 wins. The, the second half schedule for the Astros is a joke, you know, and some of these teams that they're playing over and over again. So for me, this is your last chance to get any exposure to Verlander because I do think at the end of the day, just like I came on the show when he was 25 to one and I said, put all of our money in Verlander because that number is a joke. Well, guess what? If you yep. got it then, or if you got it at 20 or 10 or five, this is your last chance at two and a half. Joe Pisapia, set the stage for the second half. You did a brilliant job. More coming on Diamond Bets this weekend. More on TMA next. Sports Grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. They played last game. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less. Aaron Rodgers and the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. They win Stanley Cups over there. Give me the Game practice. time decisions. Kind of bizarre when you consider, like the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In game live I all like access. Mandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game oh, live man. prime oh, yeah, time. The, major, the PGA champion. In yes. game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. The early line. The favorite is Paul Goldschmidt at plus 110. We know that war matters. Could these defensive superstars actually factor into this conversation because of how it boosts their overall wins above replacement? This year, aren't we doing that? Is anybody right now out there watching this show going, my goodness, now's the time to strike on Paul Goldschmidt? Absolutely not. Only on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. Eric Haas is behind the plate for Davis at 4,100. Aledmus Diaz is 3,700. We know he's in. Altuve at 6,000. Josh Smith at 3,400. You're just going to try to maximize points as much as possible. Or are you trying to get uh, a differentiated roster, find a couple low-owned guys? So I think starting with the Astros guys in dead in uh, Aledmus Diaz and Jose Altuve. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. With this kid, he had a lot of years left on his deal. And, and to give the Cardinals credit for doing this, Pharrell. They didn't have to do this. And the agent put pressure on him. And, and what, what's fascinating, Pharrell, about the situation is the agent also represents the head coach, Cliff Kingsbury. And here's the thing. Murray is now signed one more year past the head coach, Cliff Kingsbury. And Kingsbury also recruited 
this quarterback to Texas Tech. It's kind of an amazing story. The Sports Grid Network. We close out our two hours together on this Friday live on the morning after on Sports Grid and the week here on TMA as well. For one final time, live from our headquarters here at Bellworks in Homedale, New Jersey, I am Ben Stevens. But before we say farewell, the true second half of the Major League Baseball regular season starts today. Games all across the league on the diamond. And we need some exposure on Shohei Otani. He got us a plus 550 ticket during the All-Star game on Tuesday night. First pitch, first swing, let's go get it. Shohei Otani, do the same for us on the mound here as we round out the week on this Friday evening in Atlanta for Shohei and the Angels against the Atlanta Braves. So before we say farewell, before we say goodbye, it's time for a Major League Baseball and Shohei Otani K-Prop best bet. It is time for Bye Bye Bye. We have discussed that K-Prop for Otani today against the Braves a few times on the show. It's eight and a half. It's rather lofty across the marketplace. And the over has plus money at plus 102. And that's exactly where we are going. Over eight and a half strikeouts for Shohei against the Braves today. Because Atlanta has the third highest K-rate against righties all year long in Major League Baseball. In that first half of the year, striking out about 25% of the time it's down a tick in the last month month and a half or so but still top 10 at 23.3 percent but the focus still is on Shohei Otani four consecutive starts for Otani with double digit strikeouts against the Marlins the Astros the White Sox and the Royals and none of those teams even have a top 12 K rate in terms of Major League Baseball this year that is how dominant Shohei Otani has been on the mound. So if you give me plus money on the show show in Atlanta today, I'm going to take it. Over eight and a half strikeouts against the Braves for Shohei Otani today in Atlanta. That does it for us here this week on the morning after all across the grid. Sirius XM Channel 159 is where you've been listening and watching all across the Spiz Grizz Network as well. I am Ben Stevens. We'll talk on Monday. Have a great weekend.